Hello and welcome. In this video, I will get you up and running with our coding education platform, Zenva for Schools, so that you can start teaching programming to your students right away. Over email, you are sent some important information, which consists in two different URLs and your access credentials. If your school was called example, the URL that corresponds to the admin portal would be something like admin-example.zemba.com. And this is the site where you and potentially other teachers will manage students and also download supporting teaching material. Then there's also the portal for students. This is where the lessons are accessed, where you and the students can access the lessons. Your access credentials are good for both portals. So it's the same user account. You can use the same username and password in both, both sites. So the very first thing you'll want to do is send students to these portals so that they can start taking lessons. And how do you create student accounts? There are two ways. The easiest way is to simply send them to the URL where the lessons are. So you receive this URL over email. It's not going to be example. It's going to be your school name in here. So you'll send them here and then they have to click on the side menu and go to sign up where they can sign up with a user account. So I'm quickly going to create a student account to show you what this looks like. Sample.com and just a simple password. So I've set up my first name, last name, email address and password. And then you click the students click on get started. This will take them to the lessons. We will look at the lessons in, in, in a little bit. So I'm going to talk now about the other way to create user accounts. So one way, as we saw, is to send students to the directly to where the lessons are and they can start learning right away. The other way to do it is for you to do it manually in the admin portal. So I'm going to sign to sign in with a teacher account. So you were sent your access credentials over email. You can also change your password once you are in if you if you want. So I've accessed now the admin and if I go to users in here, I will see three users at the start. I will see my teacher account. I will see the student that I just created. See, it's a student. And you will also see an admin account, which is something that we set up so that we can help you in case you need. An important piece of information here is that it shows how many accounts you have left. I mean, how many accounts you can create and how many you have uh, in total. Uh, the admin account does not count towards this. So this is consists on users and teachers. So as you can see, um, it's up to you if you want to give access to more teachers. And if you are running out of accounts, uh, the first thing that I would do would be to delete account accounts of students who are no longer in the class. And that can free some spaces for new students. If you do need more accounts, then please contact us and we can arrange that for you. So how do we create a new student? You click on new and then you make sure that you're selecting student in here and you can enter the first name of the student, last name of the student, an email address and a password for the student. If a student needs to uh, forget their password, um, you can find their account in here and go to this, um, this envelope and that will send them a, an email to the email address that they entered so that they can reset their password. The, the, this is the edit button. So if you click that, you can modify the, the name, the last name, the email. And you can also, if you click here, you can also set a different password for the student. So if you really, if you quickly need to help a student to get into the platform, you can just change their password. And uh, this is how you can delete accounts. So I'm not going to delete it, but this is how you can do it. Um, so now I'm going to show you where you can download the teaching material. So if you go to teacher guides, um, all of the interactive lessons have supporting uh, material, which is the content of the lesson, uh, but in a PDF format. For example, if I want to download that, uh, the, the guide for the HTML tags lesson, I can just click on that and that will download a PDF file and 
that will open it in a, in a PDF viewer. So it can be uh, any PDF viewer. And this will have all the content from that lesson, the exercises and the solutions. So that can help. Um, now, let's take a look at the lessons themselves. Let's take a look at the, at the actual content and lessons. Um, if you access in here with your teacher credentials, you will be able to access any lesson. You can skip lesson prerequisites. You can just access any lesson. But for students, they need to complete lessons in order once they enroll in a course. So let's begin. Let's say that students want to learn web development. So you go to web development and then you have different courses available. For example, HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And then there are some video based project uh, project co uh, courses. The all the ones that have the, the video the play icon in the middle, they are video lessons. Um, students can access all of this material and we are constantly adding new lessons and new material. So by the time you watch this video, there might already be a lot of new stuff. So let me enroll in this course in HTML. As I mentioned, students can enroll in any course. And this is the list of lessons. Students need to access them in order. For example, a student cannot access the links lesson and unless until they complete the tags lesson. So I'm going to go to the tags lesson. And as you can see, lessons consist in interactive content um, um, such as this and, and usually concepts get tested right away and we reinforce them over and over throughout the lesson. And sometimes in, in follow up lessons, we actually include questions of previous lessons. For example, in this case, they have to drag and drop the blocks in the correct order to create their first. Um, so let me show you what happens if I, if I get it wrong, uh, wrong answer and explanation why it's wrong. Um, and, and then they continue with the lesson. And every time they get um, a question wrong, they, they uh, lose one of the hearts. Um, but if they, if they lose all the hearts, they have, they have to restart the lesson, but um, that, that's it. They can do the lessons. They can try the lessons as many times as they want. And, um, and lessons are, are, usually, um, are usually quite short and they consist in all these different types of, types of questions. Uh, for example, in this case, they see um, what, what this would look on a website and they have to uh, drag and drop these lines of code into and put them in the right order so that they can get the exact same result that you see on the screen. For example, this one will go here, that one there, submit answer, correct answer. Um, so let's uh, let's finish this lesson. So open a secondary tag. That will be a secondary tag. And let's close that tag now. And um, now we just need to add a paragraph to this, which will be this one here. And we have completed a lesson. So students gain experience points every time they complete a lesson. And this is an optional feature if they uh, they get access and they can do seven days in a row, one lesson each day, they will get an additional reward. And we're actually actively adding more gamification elements. So probably within within a, a month, there will be more, more of this. And there's an optional uh, um, re um, review so they can they can write something, you can write something if you have any comments. And, and that's that's about it. So then the lesson is completed and people can go on to the next lesson. Let me show you what's uh, a bit more of the content. Let's go to game development. In game development, we have one interactive course on Phaser. And one thing about this game development material, it's all on Phaser library, is that they require JavaScript knowledge. So students need to get JavaScript basics first from the web development uh, topic before they can start making games. I wish people could start making games right away, but it's a requirement for this library because you will be coding in JavaScript. Um, so the very first lesson of the game development module actually explain a bit what the what the library is about and give some some foundations. Um, you, we usually show the the result of what the person would be seeing, and and also explaining a bit how the web works and and how the phaser library works. 
So I'm going to leave that lesson. I'm going to pause that lesson. And I also want to show you one of the video courses. So for example, this is one of the video courses. All the, fa all the video courses that have numbering need to be completed in order. So you have to start with project one, project two. Uh, as, as appealing as some of these images may look, they do need people to have done the previous projects because we try not to repeat too many of the concepts more than necessary. Um, just so that people can actually spend time on new on new features or new functionality. So people can build a total of 14 games with the material here and one extra game from, from the JavaScript version, which is also video based. So the, the videos are actually quite simple. They work in a similar way than what you already saw. So it's just like um, an embedded video. They, if you if you want high resolution, they have to click HD. Sometimes it's selected by default, but not always. And this button here will make it full screen. So all of these videos, um, I, all of these lessons consist of just one video per lesson. Um, and and then they can move on to the next video. There's a total of thirty hours of Facer and about five hours of JavaScript and two hours of HTML and CSS. Uh, when they're done, they can sign up or they can just close the browser. Um, ideally, it's best to sign up so that the account is left um, closed. So I'm going to sign up and that was my session with as a student. Now let's go to the last part of this training, which is to show you how you can view student progress and manage your classroom. So um, our student has now completed some material and this icon here actually takes me to the report of the student. So I know that this student, hello world, um, has 20 uh, experience points and has completed two lessons. And I know he's enrolled or she is enrolled in HTML of which, of which they have completed 14% and they completed the lesson tags. I know that uh, this user is enrolled in Phaser Basics but no progress has been made so far. And I know that already 5% of that video course has been completed, the intro lesson. So you can view this for each individual student. Um, so if you have multiple students, let me create quickly create another student so that we can have at least two students. So I'm going to call this student just something very simple, example.com, which is usually used for these sort of demonstrations. So I have two students now and I can create a classroom. So I'm gonna close to call this classroom, for example, 10th grade, um, computer science, and I select which students I want in my classroom. If by any, if, if for any reason I made a mistake, I can always edit and unselect a student and save, but I'm not gonna do that. You can also delete the classroom. And this takes me to the report of that classroom. So that um, I can see the all a summary of the students that are in this classroom, how, how many lessons each one has completed and what's the course progress. So when you finish your admin, you're using the admin, don't forget to log out. And if you need to change your password, go to this wheel here and you can change your password. So I'm going to log out because I don't want other people to access that, account, that, that um, admin functionality and then you are good to go. So if you have any questions at all uh, or any comments, please let us know. Um, we are taking a lot of feedback at the moment to improve this platform. We strongly believe that teaching kids and uh, teenagers computing thinking, programming, computer science, game development is essential. These are essential skills and we are trying to build the best possible coding education platform for schools. So we're really open to hear your thoughts and do let us know if you find anything. And we very much look forward to um, seeing how, uh, you, how you like the platform and, and how you start using it. Thanks for watching.